Out of the corner of my eye, I caught sight of him repeatedly glancing over at me before looking away. I pretended not to notice as the knot of guilt in my stomach grew. A sudden clutter had us starting. What was that? Whatever it was, it came from that direction. We cautiously made our way to the source of a sound. We both froze in shock at the scene in front of us. Well, someone has strange taste in decor and possibly lacks, lacks olfactory perception. Oh my god! We look to see a pale Mr. Wolf in the corridor closely followed by Mr. Bandati. I was wondering where the two of you were. I almost thought we got lost. Finally, company that might actually hold it together. I don't think I ever seen you this excited to see me. The Dalian show his body. Mr. Bandages completely ignore us as he walked through the bloody corridor to get a closer look at the bloodstained message on the wall. I cringe at the sloshing of his feet over the entrails. Eric certainly adorned himself this time. For once, solving in his Halloween event is more creepy than corny. Are you going to tell us what you're looking at or just stay there and enjoy the smell? Hey, the message is a little smear, alright? And the writing stuff is really untidy. I'm trying to figure out the word right now. He scanned the word before making a rude sound. There's nothing useful here. What does it say though? I'll hide something something see? Find something before I uh, something something first. Something something last something fails we shall something for all. That is completely useless. Are you sure you're reading it right? You're welcome to try if you think you can do better. The count Krimas as he walked toward the wall. I'm going to have to throw these shoes out after this. E, T, blank, blank, and blank, T, uh, eternity? Not much use, were you? Well, that could be pay. Or play, I'm not sure if that's a smear or an owl. Still not helpful! The sound of childish singing bounce of the walls, seemingly coming from everywhere at once. The lights began to flicker and I saw Mr. Wolf grab my hand. As the singing faded, the lights stopped flickering. Well, that was something. Nothing more than a cheap trick to scare us. Well, it must have worked considering how close you are to me all of a sudden. Or don't tell me you have actually fallen for me as well. You're full of yourself. They made their way back over to us. Calm glanced at our clasped hands before quickly looking away and clearing his throat. Well, anyway, that clue was of no help. We came from that corridor and there was nothing out of the ordinary. Perhaps we should continue along the left path until we find more clues? Yeah, probably best to leave this area as quickly as we can. Let's hope Eric's second clue makes more sense. We all headed off together, keeping a lookout for anything that might give us a hint as to what we were supposed to be doing. After a few minutes of walking, the lights began flickering again. Keep moving, it's just a tree. As he said that, we saw a flickering blue light in the middle of the corridor. Mr. Wolf's hand tied around mine, he suddenly stopped. I turned to face him, but he was staring at something straight ahead. Hey, what's the hold up? Mr. Bandages pushed his way in front of us before stopping abruptly. Hey, come, come take a look at this. The car walked past us to stand beside Mr. Bandages. The sinking started up once again as my eyes started to see what had caught their attention, but I couldn't see anything with them in the way. I let go of Mr. Wolf's hand and pushed my way between Mr. Bandages and the cow. Is that a child? The child pointed at us and mouthed something silently. Does anyone know how to liberate? Regrettably, it is not one of my skills, <laughs> Mr. Bandages. As a matter of fact, I do. So, what is she saying? Four little costume dolls to play with me. One fell behind and then they were free. And then they were... Mr. Wolf! We turned to face him, but he was gone.